everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. My name is Brandy Franson, and I am Senior Associate Director of International Admission at Rollins College in Orlando, Florida. Today, I'm just going to give you a very brief um, yet poignant, uh, pointed PowerPoint um, and presentation about the value of the liberal arts education. Um, to be completely honest, I don't, I am not the byproduct of a liberal arts education, and I've since been working at Rollins now for seven years. Um, and when I first started working at Rollins, I actually, because I came from a specialty program, I went to art school. And I was, once I started working at Rollins, I really did start to notice some of the things that I was truly missing um, in my unilateral education and how much I really could see the students at the liberal arts institution I was working for at the time at Rollins really starting to get it and, and have the tools that they needed to succeed in the workforce. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this from my perspective and sort of um, from the perspective of the institution that I work for, but in general, just the value proposition of the liberal arts education. I'm going to go ahead and go to my next slide. So the term liberal arts has really existed for quite a long time. This has been around since the times of Aristotle uh, in ancient Greece. And the word liberal or liberalis used to, meant, used to mean just freedom. Um, it didn't have the political connotations that it has today. Um, and it, But this term has been around for a very long time. And so it really it meant... Um, and arts back in those times really just meant the ability to study in anything, like if you were an astronomer, or if you were studying science, or if you were studying um, any kind of degree, it meant it was a, an art form for you to be able to study. So as you can see here, um, the term just meant the freedom to choose your education. So if you participated in public debate, or if you served in the military, um, or if you were in studying geometry or even music, that was where this term came from. So it has been around for quite a long time. Um, and again, just to reiterate, it means the freedom to choose your education. And the whole idea behind that is when you go to a liberal arts college, most of the time they are small in size. The classrooms usually vary between 17 and 30 students at a time. So there's a lot of um, opportunities for contributing to the classroom discussion. And there's also a high value placed on the ability to have civil discourse um, and you know, agreeing to disagree in a very uh, civil manner. And we give you the tools to be able to elaborate, your thought, elaborate on your thoughts, participate in the classroom discussion, defend your ideas, self-advocate, networking, public speaking, so it's really a very um, well-rounded education. It's meant to give you a foundation. Um, so just to give you a couple of quotes from the page, this approach views learning as an ongoing process of questioning, searching, probing, and exploring. And that is absolutely true. Um, if you have a liberal arts education, it doesn't mean that it's the last degree that you will have. Um, you will get a bachelor's degree in computer science or um, it could be anything. It could be biology. It could be art. And you still can graduate from a liberal arts institution with your first, you know, first one to two years really exploring what you want to study. And it doesn't you don't have to choose a major really until the end of your second year. So, for example, I grew up in Honduras, which is a small, tiny country in Central America. And we do not have liberal arts curriculums in Honduras. So if I had gone to school there, and I had decided after six months that really what I was studying was not what I thought it was. Perhaps I thought before I went into the classroom, it was going to be a certain way. And then I started taking the classes and realized quickly, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. In that situation, in a country like Honduras, and, and not having a liberal arts education curriculum, I would have to start all over again. So the reality is that the liberal arts gives you a lot more flexibility to change your mind. And if you decide that you don't no longer want to study that particular subject, you just keep going. You can switch your major. You can change your major as many times as you want during the first two years. Um, a liberal arts education is not meant to 
take away from the experience, it's meant to add to the experience. So the rule of thumb is that a third to half of the classes will be in your major, um, but there's also a balance with other things, right? So other things that you might love, maybe you wanna take that art class, maybe you want to take a music class, maybe you want music to be your major and you want business to be your minor. All of those things are possible at a liberal arts institution. So it really takes into account these three foundations. Um, at Rollins, we have what we call Rollins College Conference courses, and it's basically like first year seminars, and we divide them into course, um, core categories. So all of them have these characteristics, though, engaged learning, foundation in liberal arts, and then immersion in field studies. So having access to a liberal arts curriculum will give you access to all of these ways of learning and thinking. In the workforce, this is really important, um, employers really love students that have graduated from liberal arts colleges. They find them to be much more astute, flexible, they're not unilateral or um, focused on only one thing. They are able to, um, you know, cross train, they're able to think of creative ways, improvise, all of these things that are taught as part of a liberal arts education. Um, at the very bottom, Daniel Pink, he's one of my favorite, favorite authors. Um, he wrote a book called, well, he's written a, many, many books. He's got a Harvard degree, but um, he wrote a book called A Whole New Mind. Actually, this, this is it right here. Um, and in that, he says, the useless liberal arts degree has become tech's hottest ticket. Useless in quotation marks. Stop thinking of Silicon Valley as an engineer's paradise. There's far more liberal arts majors who know how to sell and humanize. And it's true, um, you know, knowing one thing is not enough anymore. So having the ability to have both um, an engineering degree and a liberal arts degree, like in one of our pre-engineering programs or a business degree at a liberal arts college, it gives you that one other magic factor, um, the, the way that you present yourself, the way that you act during that interview, the ways that we prepare you for that interview, because that's another thing that we do um, at liberal arts colleges is we take career planning and placement as part of your curriculum from the very first semester that you're here. We have that conversation with you. You know, what internships do you want to have? What kind of co-ops do you want to be a part of? Do you want to do a global study abroad program? Where do you want to go? All those questions are very important, and those are um, issues that we address from the very, very first time you step on campus. So in the workforce, again, um, we're just going to keep going on this little on this little topic. Um, you can see here that college degree match versus college major match, they very rarely <laughs> show, they very rarely match. So just because you want to, you know, you might study art history at a liberal arts college or English at a liberal arts college does not necessarily mean that you're going to be an art history teacher or that you're going to be an English teacher when you graduate. Most of the people that study at a liberal arts college go on to get a second, a, you know, a second degree like a master's or even a tertiary degree like a PhD. And it's more of, it acts as more like a springboard. Um, and it does give you that wonderful foundation. And in a few slides, I'm actually going to show you some very, very successful um, CEOs and COOs and show you where they went to school and what degrees they got. So here's the first one. Um, Howard Schultz, who's the, you know, the CEO of Starbucks, he graduated from Northern Michigan University and he has a degree in communications. Um, a degree in communications, which could be literally anything, um, marketing, advertising, writing, journaling, so journalize, journalism, any of those fall under the category of communication studies. And as you can see here, he did go to a liberal arts college and he did have the ability to pivot and make his um, skills marketable. And now he is one of the richest men in the world. Steve Ells, who is the CEO, CEO of uh, Chipotle, which if you're not familiar with Chipotle, it's this incredible um, restaurant. It's sort of like a fast food healthy 
It's better than Taco Bell, but it's also Mexican food. He has a bachelor's degree in art history from the University of Colorado. Um, and again, this is a liberal arts institution. It's not the last degree that he got, but he talks about how that foundation really gave him uh, the tools to sort of become who he is today. Richard Pepler, um, the CEO of HBO, he graduated from Franklin and Marshall, and he has a bachelor's degree in government. Um, and again, he's used those skills um, in his ability to govern a really large company like HBO. I can't even imagine all the different personalities and politics that he has to navigate in order to be um, at HBO, but he again has used his degree. Uh, the former CEO of Walt Disney World, he has a degree in English literature um, and theater from Denison University. So again, like these are just some, you know, short, brief examples of how these people who have become very successful have used their liberal arts education. Uh, CEO of YouTube, she has a BA, a Bachelor of Arts in History and Literature and um, from Harvard University. And again, that's nothing to do with YouTube. We teach, and so the value proposition of liberal arts is we teach you basically what employers want to see in employees. Um, civil discourse is a really important skill, um, especially nowadays um, in this political climate, being able to have a discussion, to agree to disagree, share your ideas, um, advocate for yourself, and even just to be able to have like a global view um, that's another thing that we that liberal arts colleges truly value is global citizenship and responsible leadership. So we want you to not spend all four years at our institutions. We want you to engage globally, go on that global study abroad program, get that internship before you graduate. Those are all parts of the curriculum. We basically are trying to equip you for the, you know, for the transformation of who you're becoming as an adult um, and also what you're going to become after you graduate. Usually, I'm going to read this out to you because I think it's really important. Usually, simply agreeing to disagree um, is the best we can do. That's where a liberal arts education comes in. Dedicated to the free and open pursuit of knowledge for its own sake, a liberal arts education provides a multifaceted view of the world. It enables students to see beyond one perspective, encouraging them to understand others even if they don't agree. It instructs us to base our opinions on reason, not emotion. I absolutely love this quote, um, and it is truly the whole cornerstone of the liberal arts education. Um, and this is just what I had said before. In times of great division and what the world has been experiencing in the last five to seven years, um, a liberal arts education, no matter what your political leanings are, is valuable. It's definitely the great way. It's a great way for you to be able to see different viewpoints, assess your own, and then more importantly, be open to other people's views. So that's just a brief synopsis of the liberal arts and liberal arts curriculum. Hopefully, um, this has given you a little bit of a foundation. I look forward to speaking more with you in my booth, and I hope that you have a wonderful night at this fair. Have a great night.